Hey, dear Tyler, how are you doing? Hope you're good. Hope you're fine. Hope your week is coming along well. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time that you're listening to this particular episode. I really hope that you enjoyed the previous episode, right? And then the whole concept around it, right? I really hope that you're able to pick out lessons and it was an encouragement, you know, for you. Now, like I told you that we'll be having the series, right? So the series is the other side of the story, right? The other side of the story. So that's the series that we're going on. And, you know, the last episode we had was The Unprodigal Son. And today's episode, what we'll be having or discussing is, what about the 99? What about the 99? Now, I had a discussion last week with a friend of my Jimmy, you know, we're just talking about, you know, just different things. And, you know, we brought up this issue about the 99. So within last week, there was this song that came out by an amazing, amazing music minister, Chandler Moore, right? And the title of the song is Omema. Now, there was a portion of the chorus, you know, talking about... Uh, Think that the Lord being the one that always leaves the 99 for the one, right? Always leaving the 99 for the one. And then when you think about um, this other song, Reckless Love, right? Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, he chases me down, fights that I'm found, leaves the 99, right? So that particular song, um, written by. So written by Corey Asbury, right? Beautiful song. So that particular portion. So over time, there has been this, you know, big emphasis on, you know, the Lord always leaves the 99 for the one. The Lord always leaves the 99 for the one. And I actually made a post about it um, on Friday. I actually made a post about it on social media on Friday. And um, we felt, me and Jimmy, while we were talking about it, we felt that there's, there's been this overemphasis on that, right, over emphasis on that. Now, there's something about truth. There's something about truth. If you overemphasize a particular portion of truth, right, it's very easy for you to miss out on the whole picture or even delve into error, right, even delve into error. And, you know, just like the story that I shared, you know, with the prodigal son, and I, and I really love it that it's like, it's a kind of like a transition that we're having because a lot of people have had those experiences, right, in church where they serve, they do all that they need to do, and they don't feel like they're being heard or understood, right? And then the ones that seemingly go out of their way or, up, you know, wayward or, you know, do things that are not proper, Right, or in other words, in church where it's backslide, are the ones that seemingly really come back with testimonies, you know, and there's a lot of things said about them. It's the same way that people have also felt like, okay, what about the 99 that stayed back? Because the impression is that God is going to abandon the 99 people or the 99 other sheep in search of the one. So people now have the impression that, oh, that one person carries more value than us 99 obedient ones. It now looks like, you know, God has favorites. God can go heaven and earth for some other people. And, you know, clearly in scripture it says that, you know, um, God himself has no favorites, right? He, he's not partial, right? He, he does not esteem others higher than others, no. So, it, you know, there's this kind of like little, you know, challenge that we have trying to understand things. I was having a discussion with a friend of mine, Chisong, and, you know, she made mention of it too, that it's very easy for people to be like, okay, what about us, you know, the 99 that are, you know, stayed? Is it that we don't deserve God's care? We don't deserve God's attention, right? We don't deserve God's love, like that. And as I was thinking about it, you know, before I even got into the discussions, because I spend a lot of time, I try to spend a lot of time in contemplations, you know, just thoughts and all. I, as I was thinking about why the emphasis so much, right, the Spirit of the Lord ministered to me, and I believe that this would be 
a really, really great help to a lot of us. And he ministered this. And I want to say it as he gave me, right? So this is what he said. He said, The one that leaves the 99 for the one, make sure that the 99 are secure. The one isn't more valuable than the 99. The 99 are safe while the one isn't. And it is a worthy sacrifice to save that one. Now, God leaving the 99 for the one, right? He did not leave them vulnerable. He did not leave them in a state of of danger, you know, where, where people could come over, you know, and attack them, or they could be, you know, prone to any of the attacks of the enemy. No, they were kept safe. Now, the one that ran away, actually ran away from safety, ran away from the confines where the hand of the Lord could protect. Now, his love, right, for that one makes him go in search of that one to bring that one back into the fold that the 99 already exists in. So it's not that he's creating another place for that one to be, you know, kept. No, he's bringing the one back into where the 99 obedient ones were. So the same things that the 99 were receiving or are receiving is what that one is still going to receive. I was sharing humorously with my brother Jimmy and I was like, you know, it's just like the parable of the, you know, the lost coin. So in that whole Luke chapter 15, right, it's it's the parable of the lost coin. Um, I think the parable of the lost pearl, right? Lost pearl, the parable of the lost coin, and then the parable of the prodigal son, right? So in the parable of the lost coin, this particular person had 10 coins, but nine, but one was missing, right? And then the person carried a candle, swept the whole room, and found the one coin that was missing, and called all the neighbors and rejoiced, and said, oh, this one coin that I had lost, I finally found it. And I told Jimmy humorously, I said, just because the person found the the lost coin doesn't mean he threw the nine coins away. In fact, the 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 the, the um oh no English is trying to fail me now. Because that one coin got lost, it will put more pressure on the other person to secure the nine. Because whatever made that one coin to get missing can also make the remaining nine get missing. So if I had 10 coins and one was missing, what I do is first secure the nine and keep them away from getting lost or keep them away from being in harm's way. As I search for the one, my love for the nine is what made me keep them aside and protect them. My love for the one is what makes me go out and look for that one to bring it back into the system that I've created that the other nine have found protection in. This is, it's it's really liberating to notice. So there's no special place that the father is keeping the one. No. Now, when we understand that the place where God has kept us is safe and secure, that my obedience to God is not a disadvantage to me, that my serving God, that my obeying his principles, engaging it is not a loss to me. When I realize somebody else has lost his way, when he comes back into the fold, I can now fully rejoice with that individual because I know that he has entered into a rest I'm enjoying. Now, whenever you come into, I, I, I used to watch a lot of, 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 of you know, training military videos. I, I loved it. Right? At a point in time, I, I watched the Navy SEALs training. I watched normal U.S. Army training, Taiwanese Army training, you know, just their basic training. And one thing that happens whenever they come in to the, the Army, right, is what they call an orientation an orientation so there is this special attention that is given to them 
right? There's this focus because it's a strange place for them, right? And they need to be able to get up to speed with the rest of the other people because it's going to be a team sport or not, not really a sport, but it's going to be a team effort, right? Everybody is going to be needed to be at the top of their game. So that attention is given to them so that when they are put into um, a situation, they can respond like other veterans do. And that's why they go through that orientation. When I remember um, growing up, so when left primary school, going into secondary school, there's something that was called an orientation for us, right? And it was because we were going to boarding school, right? Now, for those people that went to day school, they really didn't have any orientation. All they did was that, oh, this is your class, this is your class teacher, and then you go over to that class, and then you go back home. Now, but because we were changing a system, we were literally changing a system, we had to come into the knowledge of that system. So they told us, okay, this is when you wake up, this is um, what is required of you, your dress code, you know, all of that. Um, this is the structure of your room, these are your room heads, these are your prefix, this is what... You understand, all of these things were needed because it was a new environment and it was expected of us to be able to be caught up to speed with that. Now, whenever anybody leaves the fold for whatever reason, right, maybe missteps, falls out of line, disobeys principles, and becomes exposed to the enemy, what happens is that... Um, there's, there are a lot of scars that they could carry, a lot of scars that they could carry. And those scars, and because of the, the, the period of time that they may be out, a lot of things could be said to them that they begin to feel unworthy, they begin to feel unloved, they begin to feel like God does not want them. Now, when they are brought back, they can still suffer some of that trauma. And that is why that attention is needed to pull them out of that system. But the system that they're being pulled out of is a system that you already existed as part of the 99. You still get the same love, you still get the same attention. Now the truth is that if you were that one, you would want someone to save you. And if it were you, the Lord will go out all out for you. That's how tenacious his love is. But his love is not inconsiderate. A friend of mine made a post on it to say that we serve a responsible God. Understand, he's not under pressure to make somebody feel good. No, from the goodness of others, you would know how much he loves you too. It would have been one thing, like I don't know why I'm making an emphasis on this, but I feel that it's extremely important. It could have been one thing if the Lord would put them in another place, he created a new pen, or maybe that one was now sleeping with him personally. No, brought them back into the same fold. Whatever treatment, whatever thing that the person needed, he gets it in that same fold. God cares about the 99 just as much as he cares about the one that got missing. God cares about. Because wherever the 99 are kept is safe. The Lord will not leave the 99 for one, knowing that the 99 would be exposed to danger. He would never do that. He would never, ever do that. So you are deserving of God's love. You are deserving of God's care. Like I said that this whole thought, right, is like a... How do I put it? It's like, it's like a transition. It's gradually going. And it fits into the previous episode about the unprodigal son, right? That you, you are entitled to a lot of things. And, you know, don't have it in your mind that... The things that you do is the reason why you will experience God's love. No. His love is what kept you in that boundary. His love is what provides for you. His love is what gives you, you know, brings knowledge, you know, understanding, all of your feeding processes. He's, he's the reason for your source or he's the source of your source, however you would put it. Right? And that's the powerful thing about being part of the 99. Being part of the 99 makes you, you know, your, your God has blessed you with a community of other people. There are other people within your own circle. You're not alone. One of the dangers of being the one is that you are exposed and you are alone. 
There's no shielding. There's no covering. But when you're part of the 99, that shielding of community, that community of believers, right? Um, the community of believers that causes or forms that shielding for you. It, it, it changes, you know, it builds something around you. It's an advantage. It's an advantage. Like I said, that just because the master was looking for one coin, didn't mean he would throw the nine away. Didn't mean he would throw the nine away. Jesus was speaking to the father in John and he said that father, see the ones that you have given to me. I have not lost one except the son of perdition so that the scripture will be fulfilled. But what Jesus is saying is that everyone that the Lord has given me is precious enough for me to hand over back to the father. Everyone that the Father has given me, everyone that has come into my hands is precious enough for me to secure, to hand over to the Father. And so he was even talking about the enemy, saying that he that the enemy has no ability to pluck these ones out of my hands. He is he is that meticulous to ensure your safety. Now, anyone that leaves the fold may leave the fold because of a choice. Now his love now gets expressed by pulling that one back and bringing them down back to the fold. To the same system that they left that they felt was not good enough for them. Dear Tyler, you being part of the 99, you are worth as much as the one that got missing. I know that God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He is so, so into you as an individual. And he sees everything that you do. He sees everything that you do. We're having a retreat worship team, Koinonia. And um, I was taking a session about diligence and commitment. Um, And the Lord led me to share this. He said, allow the one who sees to reward you. The one, allow that person that truly sees to be the one that rewards you. Your commitment and your 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 every step of obedience does not go unnoticed before the Father. Does not go unnoticed before the Father. And remember in the previous episode, there are t- if you feel the absence of God in a particular point, right? It's about reaching out to Him and telling Him how you feel. Reaching out to Him and telling Him how you feel at that point. I think it was Pastor Chintok that was saying it, and I saw it in one of his, um, you know, one of these Instagram reels, very powerful thought that he expressed. He said that one of the mistakes that we make is that every time we engage with the Holy Spirit, we always try to make it about holy things, not knowing that he is the one person we should talk about our frailties and our infirmities. So if at a point in time I'm not experiencing God's love or I do not, I'm not conscious of it or some have lost the thought or the reality of God's love, what I should do with the Holy Spirit is not just to come and, for the lack of a better word, pump up his ego or something. He he doesn't need it. He needs that sincerity for me to say, Spirit of the living God, I am struggling with this. I know your word says that you love me. I know that you have shown your love for me by the um, death of Christ. I know you have brought me into the fold, but really I am struggling to accept it. Help me, help me, help me. And the helper now comes. The helper now comes. One of the dangers of being in the fold and being safe is that you feel that your efforts, that your efforts are the reason why you are being kept. Not knowing that there is an invisible hand behind you. And because you, you know, follow the principles, you know, you do certain things which the Father wants, you could grow up feeling like you don't need a helper, that God owes you. I always love reading the scripture and coming to the realization of how, as much as Jesus was the Son of God, he didn't do any active ministry until he got the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And when he got the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, he went into full, you know, he went into G spirit mode straight up. When he got to that point, yes, 
when he got, you know, baptized and empowered by the Holy Spirit, he moved. When Jesus was in Gethsemane, he was in anguish and he was in pain. He 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 felt that, you know, whether if it was anxiety or whatever it was. But he felt it, and the person he went to straight was God. Oh Father, this is what I feel. But not my will, but yours be done. And the Bible says that when he made that statement, that he was strengthened. When you feel your weakest, that is when you should call to the greatest, right? When you feel your weakest, that's when you should call to the greatest. Reach out to God and let the Father know exactly how you feel. If God has helped you enough to stay within a particular place and be faithful, right? Make sure that you enjoy the benefits of the Father too. Enjoy it, enjoy it. Enjoy it. I really want us to know that the 99 are worth just as much as the one. And God expresses his love in various ways. To a hungry man, love is food. To a broke man, love is provision of financial resources. To a sick man, love is healing or at least medical treatment. To a depressed man, love is the support of family or you know, the change of mindset. To a scared man, love is companionship and motivation. That assurance that comes with it. Every single position in your life comes with its own expression of love. You cannot weigh love just because you're in two different positions. The position you are in will determine the expression of love that you experience. And the position you put yourself in is also, um, also will also determine the expression of God's love that you will experience. Have you ever called upon the name of the Lord that he did not answer? Have you ever told him about your pain and struggles that he did not come through? Call unto me and I will answer you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer you. You need to understand that we all have access to the Father. But those who call upon the name of the Lord are the ones that will be saved. So make mention of it before the Lord Tyler, right? So remember, whether you're one, whether you're the one, or whether you're the 99, God loves you. And you're a priority to him. Right, so I hope that this really blessed you. Um, Remember to keep on sharing the message of dear Tyler with other people. And we're coming up with other episodes in the same series. And, you know, other parts of the collaboration that I was talking about come up with it shortly right but yeah so this is me signing out Tyler remember that I love you I believe in you and I'm always rooting for you